Have you ever wanted your screen times to just magically show up on your phone? Well, today we're having a little look on this training timing system right here. And I might do a little bit of a 40 yard dash test. Now, a little disclaimer, this is not an ad, but I was given this system in return for some social media posts and an honest review. Also, I do have affiliate links for the system down in the description. I've now been using it for about five months and I'm ready to make a verdict. And also, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you a totally free way to get really accurate times with just a high speed video from your phone or any camera. After seeing several high level athletes and training groups using this system on training camps and on Instagram, I really wanted to test it out for myself. The board timing gates that we have used in my training group for many years are good, but they are a bit clumsy to set up and also they take up a lot of space on the track and while traveling. That is usually a problem on training camps where there are <laughs> crowded tracks with several groups training at the same time. This seems to solve this and also I have wanted a timing system for my own for when I'm traveling on training camps and competitions by myself. Now back in September I got this package with some of these hats, four Freelap Junior Pro transmitters, two start buttons and two Bluetooth timing chips. The FX chip which is placed on your waist is the brain that transmits timing data to your Android or iOS device of your choice. The TX Touch Pro transmitter might be used to start any sprint from a block start or three point start and the Junior Pro transmitter will be placed at any desired point on the side of an athlete's lane to start, lap or finish the free lap timing. The timing chips turn on by themselves whenever they are moved. The Touch Pro is held down for a couple of seconds and then will start the time when you release the button. The Junior Pro transmitter is powered on before you choose either the start, lap or finish function for each of the cones. Now how this works at first feels a little magical because of the lack of gates or anything like that to run through. Just place the timing gates and the start buttons where you want to time. The cones will start or stop your times 80 centimeters before you cross them so make sure to place them accordingly. This is because the free lap's timing is based off of electromagnetic fields. Here I'm timing 20 meters with a 10 meter split so I'll put them at 10.8 and 20.8 meters. Now select the desired function of each timing gate start lap or finish time in this case the button is starting the first cone is lapping and the final cone is finishing put the timing chip on your waist start the free lap app on your phone you'll need to make an account start a new session and now you're ready to get your times here i got my time and here you got my splits A couple of times I've had some problems, but when you set it up correctly, that's how magically and easy it works. A couple of days ago, I used them to time some 120 meters, where I, for example, timed my first 20 meters and the final 100 flying meters. And today I'm going to head out and have a little bit more of a heavy session with the system. I'm running four times five times 60 meters with three and 15 minutes break. I'm going to measure the final 30 meter flyings, which is the main focus of the session. And just for fun today, I thought I would test out my first 40 yard dash in the beginning of the session. Not feeling in my best shape right now, so not expecting any Coleman times today, but we'll see how it works out. So let's head out. So I got my free laps out, measured up to... What's 40 yards in meters? 40 yards is equal to 36.576 meters. So 37 plus 376 meters with the 80 centimeters accounted for. And I warmed up and I started out with my first series. So since I'm having five series of four times 60, I will be using the first series to get warm. I'm mostly trying to not tense up too much and run with a good technique. In the second series, I will push on a little bit more. Four sixty two, four fifty four, and this will be my final forty yard before I go over to standing starts. So four fifty three will be my PB until next time. Now that the second series is over, I'm moving the cones to the thirty meter flyings, and that is what I will be focusing on for the rest of the session.
So the average 30 meter flying for all those 30 runs with the bower system was 2.95. Average for the final 16 was 2.94 and 292 with the free lap system. Fastest run was 284 on the free laps and 287 on the borer system. And I'm pretty okay with those times today. I'm not very familiar with 40 yard dash times, but I do know that there are some really fast guys in NFL that would beat that. If you're new to this channel, I'm more of a 200 meter runner. It was fun to try out though, so I might do another test closer to the summer when I'm in more of a competition shape. The session overall was pretty good. In the beginning, I was feeling kind of sluggish, but after a couple of series, I was getting into my rhythm. Finally in run 17, I was really starting to feel like myself again and I had my fastest run. So I feel like in these kinds of sessions you can really see the value of having a timing system so that you can check that you don't run too slow. And like in the final two runs when I'm starting to feel worse and the times are not as good as I want them to be, it's time to stop. I also really like to keep an eye on my average pace for all the 30 meter flyings for each of these sessions throughout the year. I can really check that I don't get too much slower when increasing the volume and hopefully that I get faster when decreasing the volume going into the season. And if you're training goes overboard and you run slower for a couple of weeks in a row, that really is an indicator that you should decrease your volume and then hopefully your times will be faster again and you can go on with increasing your training. So it's really nice to have these kinds of timing systems just to keep your training in balance. So now we've seen how the system works and how I incorporate it into my training, here are some complaints I have about the system. Back in the beginning when I got them, I really had some problems connecting them to my phone. Sometimes the times didn't show up, but I've been more wary of where I place my phone. It should be 10 to 50 meters after your finishing cone or besides it. Also, I've found if I just restart my phone, it always works. So right now it's super reliable and I will pretty much always get my times. Number two is that it is a bit expensive. It costs a lot compared to a stopwatch and maybe way too much for some of you guys watching, but compared to alternative timing gates, I do believe the price really makes sense. It's not that bad. And I do think the investment might be worth it for more experienced athletes or training groups. To be a little bit more critical and exact, I do think the free lap system should be regarded as giving more of a speed estimate rather than giving an exact speed reading. I do not think that makes them useless though. I have now probably run about 200 times with this timing system and it's not very often it's inaccurate, but at times you can really see it. When I'm comparing to the Bower system, it's almost always between 100th and 400th of a second faster in the 30 meter flyings, so that would be about 1%. But one or two times it has been about 1500th of a second faster, so... If you run a really, really big personal best, I wouldn't really trust it. But that being said, the Bower system also has a margin of error. So it could go both ways that the Bower system is a little bit slower and the free lap system is a little bit faster and that would make a big difference. I'm also thinking it might be because I'm training indoors and there might be some disturbances in the electrical signal. I don't know. But also looking at this research paper right here where they are testing the Bower system, there are some margins of error and they concluded that the Bower system is a useful instrument for measuring speed, but it might not be accurate enough to measure marginal gains for really, really experienced athletes, but it might be. And I do also think the free lap system is close enough to the Bower system that it can be a good estimate of speed in your speed sessions. Here you can see the difference between the Bower and the free lap system in my previous session. So it's not absolutely perfect in terms of the accuracy of the timing, but I think it's good enough for many. And there are several pros to this system. I think it's very intuitive and easy to use, and I think it's awesome that you can just get your times on your phone. It's also very quick to set up, and it does not take up as much space on the track as other setups where you need to use tripods. I think it's accurate enough to analyze different segments of your sprints. It's also worth noting that one cone can time two athletes so you can run with a partner one on either side of the cone and you will both get your times while competing. Also if you have a bigger training group you want to time you can save some money by not buying the Bluetooth chips but they have some cheaper ones without Bluetooth but then you need another separate transmitter for your phone. Now if it's way out of your price range I do just recommend getting a stopwatch. I often use stopwatches in 100 meters or 150s when timing those. I do not recommend timing flying runs but 60 100s, 150s, 200s and everything above, it's really useful. Just make sure you start your time at the same time every time. I usually use my first footstep and you can use your reaction or anything you'd like as long as you do it at the same time every time. Also a totally free way of getting pretty accurate times is the Kinovea sports analysis program from kinovea.org. I use that program to time splits in my races and stuff like that and you can also use it to get training times. Just load up a video into the program, preferably at least 100 frames per second for accuracy, but 50 or 60 FPS is also fine. Put out some timing clocks, find your start point, your end point and you're good. Thank you. 
If you have a slow-mo video, someone clapping to start your time, and the camera placed by a finish line, you can get a time very close to an official electronic time. And I've also tried getting flying times by setting up sticks 30 meters apart, also placing the sticks with the angle of the camera in mind so that the chest will cross at exactly 30 meters. I can also check out the 40 yard video here now to compare to the free lap timing. The video isn't too great, but it looks like my thumb leaves the ground right here. And here you see I'm about 80 centimeters before the cone and this is the time I get from Kino Veal. So that's my review of the free lap timing system. I do have an affiliate link down in the description and the comments if you're interested in buying. Thank you so much for watching guys and an extra extra big thank you to the channel members. I really appreciate the support. If you're interested in watching more of my training towards the summer season, please subscribe. I'll catch you guys somewhere else on Operation Oregon. Peace.